This is part 14 in our series of lectures on infinite sets. In this lecture we're going to talk about algebraic and transcendental real numbers. As we know, every real number is classified as either being rational or irrational. But there's another way of classifying the set of real numbers um, into so-called algebraic numbers or transcendental numbers. And here are the working definitions. If we give ourselves a real number x, then we say that x is algebraic, provided there exists a polynomial p um, having only integer coefficients such that x is a root of p. If x is a real number which is not algebraic, then we refer to it as a transcendental real number. So let's look at a few examples of these things. So first of all, 5 is an algebraic number. So in order to convince yourself of that, you have to show that you can produce a polynomial p of x um, such that it has integer coefficients only and such that 5 is a root of that polynomial. p of 5 is equal to 0. So do you see um, what particular polynomial might work? Well, here it is. If we take the polynomial p of x equals x minus 5, that is a polynomial having integer coefficients, namely 1 and minus 5. And if you replace x by 5, you'll see that p of 5 is equal to 0. And so that proves that 5 is an algebraic number. A similar proof will show you that any integer is an algebraic number. Here's another example. See if you can prove that 2 thirds is an algebraic number. Well, here's the answer. What we have to do is we have to produce a polynomial having integer coefficients um, such that p of 2 thirds is equal to 0. And here you see a polynomial that will do the trick. If we take p of x to be 3x minus 2, the coefficients 3 and minus 2 are all integers but when you replace x by 2 thirds, you'll see that you get 0. So that shows that 2 thirds is algebraic, and I think a similar argument will show that any rational number is algebraic. But I claim that square root of 2 is also algebraic, so see if you can figure out how to prove that. Well, this time we have to use a polynomial of higher degree. If we take p to be the polynomial p of x equals x squared minus 2, that's a polynomial having integer coefficients 1, 0, and minus 2. And it's easy to check that p of root 2 is equal to 0, and so that proves that the square root of 2 is algebraic. And I think a, a similar proof will show that if you take the square root of any prime number, or in fact the square root of any integer, then it's easy to show that it's algebraic. In fact, if you take any kind of a, a root, you take the nth root of any integer, then by using a polynomial of degree n, it's easy to see that that number is also algebraic. So we can produce lots of irrational numbers uh, which are in fact algebraic. All right, so we see that it's very easy to generate lots of examples of algebraic numbers. We've generated at least um, denumerably many such examples on the previous slide. Well, can we produce some examples of transcendental numbers, the numbers, the real numbers, which are not algebraic? Well, it turns out that the number e is transcendental, and the number pi is also transcendental, but the proofs of these things are really quite difficult to do. So, in fact, it's very hard to write down any specific examples of transcendental numbers. So here's the main problem that we want to consider. How many transcendental numbers are there? Since it's so hard to produce even a single transcendental number, uh, we might suspect that there really aren't very many of them. But the set of real numbers can be written as the disjoint union of the set of algebraic numbers, and the set of transcendental numbers. So what we're going to prove on the um, next few slides is that the set of algebraic numbers is actually denumerable. 
And from this we're going to be able to deduce that there must be uncountably many transcendental numbers. So in other words, even though it's very hard to verify that any specific real number is transcendental, there are actually uncountably many of them, and that will follow from the fact that there are only denumerably many algebraic ones. So here's the theorem that we're going to prove. We're going to show that the set of algebraic numbers is denumerable, and the set of transcendental numbers is uncountable. And we're going to see that it follows as a consequence of the theorem that we've derived in earlier lectures that the denumerable union of denumerable sets is denumerable. So this is a nice application of that theorem. All right, so the proof really isn't all that difficult. It's just a matter of organizing the work properly. And here's the beginning of the proof. If we give ourselves a natural number n, we're going to define p sub n to be the set of p such that p is a polynomial of degree n having integer coefficients. So first I want to try to convince you that that is a denumerable set. So if we take zn plus 1, so zn plus 1 refers to the Cartesian product of n plus 1 copies of z with itself. So if we give ourselves these um, integers, a0 through an, so that's n plus 1 integers, I'm going to map that over to this polynomial. Okay, so that's certainly a mapping from zn plus 1 into p sub n, because we're getting a polynomial out of it, and I claim that this is a bijection. Um, it's a surjection because, um, by definition of p sub n, every polynomial, uh, every element of p sub n can be written in this form for certain integer coefficients, and therefore um, we can recover it um, by just looking at the integer coefficients. Um, and so f of this n plus 1 tuple of integers is going to give us back the given polynomial. It's injective because if we give ourselves two polynomials of this form of, n, of nth degree and we equate them as functions, well, it's an exercise in linear algebra to prove that the corresponding coefficients must be identical and that's what one would need in order to see that this function is injective. Now, zn plus 1 is a Cartesian product of finitely many denumerable sets, and therefore it is denumerable, and so that proves that p sub n is denumerable. So let's try to remember that. p sub n is the set of polynomials of degree n having integer coefficients, and we've just proven that it is a denumerable set. Now, for each p in p sub n, so for each polynomial of degree n having integer coefficients, I'm going to let a sub n of p be the set of x such that p of x is 0. It's the set of real numbers that are roots of that particular polynomial. Now how big a set is this a n of p? Well, we're fixing this n, we're fixing this p, and we're looking at the set of all x that are roots of this polynomial. Well, any polynomial of degree n can have at most n roots, and so a sub n of p um, can have at most n elements. Okay, so that's, in other words, it's a finite set. Now I'm going to define a sub n to be the union of all the a n of p's as p varies over all of these polynomials of degree n having integer coefficients. We, just, we showed on the previous slide that there are only denumerably many such p sub n's. So this is a union over a denumerable indexing set. So it's a denumerable union, and each of the a n of p's is a finite set. That's what we just verified up here. And so it's a denumerable union of finite sets, and therefore the union must be um, countable. It's, e it's either denumerable or finite, but it's easy to convince yourself that a sub n has at least, has certainly infinitely many elements. Um, for example, it contains all of the integers. And, and therefore, it can't be uh, finite, it must be denumerable. So a sub n um, is denumerable. Um, now, since each one of these a n of p's 
um, is a subset of the set of algebraic numbers, right? Because each x in a n of p is the root of some polynomial having integer coefficients. So each a n of p is a subset of algebraic numbers, and therefore the union of them is also a subset of the set of algebraic numbers. So let's finally give a name to this set of algebraic numbers. We're going to call it a. And what I claim is that a is the, is the union of all of these a sub n's as n varies from 1 to infinity. So we showed in the previous paragraph that each one of these a sub n's is a subset of a, and therefore this union is a subset of a. So conversely, I have to convince you that a is a subset of the union. So let's give ourselves an element of a, let x be an element of a. What does it mean? It's an algebraic number, so therefore there has to exist a polynomial um, for which it's a root. Um, so there has to exist, th that polynomial has to have a degree, so there's a polynomial of some degree n, um, so there exists this polynomial p of degree n, and it must have all integer coefficients, so it's an element of p sub n, such that p of x is equal to zero. And then, and that means by definition, x is an element of this a n of p, and therefore it's an element of a sub n, because the a sub n is the union of all of those a n of p's, and therefore it's also in this union here. Okay, so that proves that a is equal to this union, and so we've ex expressed a here as a denumerable union of sets, and remember we proved that each of these a sub n's is denumerable. And therefore, the denumerable union of sets, each of which is denumerable, is a denumerable set that proves that A is denumerable. So the set of algebraic numbers is denumerable. But of course, the set of all real numbers is the union of A and its complement. Um, if both of these were denumerable, then the union would be denumerable. But we know that R is not denumerable. It's, it's uncountable. And therefore, this piece here must be uncountable, and that is exactly the set of transcendental numbers. And so that completes the proof.